and we, he said, I'd like to go ask your dad for your hand. I said, ask my dad for your hand. You're a sailor and you're not Catholic. You want to go ask my dad for my, my hand when he's Catholic and he don't like sailors? So we he's said, not and he's not Portuguese either. <laughs> and so we went ahead and I said, okay. I said, I'll hang on, take a chance here. So we went on up to visit my father. And his wife wouldn't come in the living room. She said hello, and she disappeared, which was okay. That's, that's par for the course. It didn't bother me. And so we uh, sat and talked, and he said, uh, and here's my husband in his, he didn't wear civilian clothes. He wore his Navy clothes, his Navy, you know, <laughs> sailor uniform. I think, oh, this is going to be good. And so we go there, and we knock at the door, and he said hello, and he looked at him real funny, at uh, uh, Joe, and then he looked, and he said, he, of course, he knew me, and we hug and we sit down and and he said, how are you folks? We're fine. And he knew something was up. <laughs> the sailor coming to his house. So then I said, uh, we call Papa, so we don't call Daddy. Uh, this is Joe Morgan and he's got something he'd like to ask you. And so then pick, Joe picked it up from there and he says, uh, uh, Mr. Fernandez, you know, I'd, I'd, uh, I love your daughter and I'd like to have your permission for us to get married. And he said, uh, what church did you go to? <laughs> and Joe said, uh, he's Baptist. Of course, that didn't mean anything. He wasn't Catholic. And so uh, then he saw he was a sailor, so he didn't ask what kind of work. <laughs> and so he says, uh, well, after a long silence, my father was good at silences. <laughs> after a long silence, he says, I guess I can't stop you. So you're going to do what you want to do anyhow. So, but I won't be at the wedding. So he said, you go ahead with what you feel you got to do. And I said, okay. And we thanked him and we hugged him and left. And then we went on and got engaged and we were married. That was March. The war hit in December, January, February, March, we got married. And uh, you got married uh, when, what day in March? That was the 7th of March. And what happened when he... The, exactly three months after yeah. the attack. And when he was supposed to be... See, we, we, the things were kind of in an uproar at that point right after the war. So we had this judge, I can't even think of it, Judd, I think his name was, J-U-D-D. -D, and he performed a lot of the weddings in his home in Nuano Valley. And so we arranged to go to there with uh, my sister and her, my brother-in-law. And his brother was going to be the best man. And my brother-in-law says, you get somebody else for the best man. I'm not going to be no best man. And I said, okay. So. His brother, the oldest, older brother, he has three brothers, and the oldest one, he's the, uh, the youngest, and the oldest one said he would uh, be the best man. Well, when he was coming there for the wedding, the alarm, the, 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 all the, the attack alarm came on, and Joe had just got out of the base in a taxi, but his brother had not got out yet. So the gates closed at Pearl Harbor. And everybody was in, stayed in, everybody out, he stayed out. So he said he and the taxi, the taxi guy stopped and they went off on the side of the road to wait for this uh, alert to pass. And it did, I think about 10 minutes and then they came to the wedding late naturally and we were sitting there my sister saying I told you so I told you so these sailors they don't they don't keep their word <laughs> and I'm thinking oh boy don't let her have her told you so <laughs> and so I'm praying about it it's waiting and finally he came and he said he was so sorry he said then he told about the alert had sounded and they were stuck but his brother didn't get out so my brother-in-law became the best man the man that said I don't want to be the best man. But he consented very nicely, and so he became the best man. And we had the wedding there at the okay, home. So you get transferred to Maui, and you're going through his stuff. And, well, he had gotten transferred, and I'm, yeah, I'm going through his stuff, packing things, because in about two weeks, I would be going April Fool's Day to Maui, the 1st of April. And uh, I find his Bible in the picking out his things and I said huh what's this and so I see holy bible I said must be a good book it's holy <laughs> so I pick it up and these are the thoughts running through my head you know this has got to be good so I open it and I said oh my what is all this and then I said 
I think I better start at the beginning because I'm getting confused <laughs> because the way it's set up and everything. So I closed the Bible and I opened to the front and I said, okay, here we are, Genesis. And see, all these thoughts are going through my head. Genesis, I know Genesis. I went to catechism. I know God created the world and in seven days he made the world. And I'm looking and reading all the things that I had had in my short course of the catechism. And I said, hmm, he ain't so bad. He believes like I do. I said, this is not so strange. So I then started writing him, you know, asking questions, what he believed and what is this and what is and he, he finally wrote back the second letter. He says, let's wait till we get together because the, I could answer the questions better than I can write 10 pages of letter explaining. So I said, okay, so we waited. And then, then you reading the book of John also? Well, later. later. Yeah, after we got to Maui, okay. we started reading the New Te Old Testament through to the New and just to get acquainted with it. And so we read through the New Old Testament and we get to the New Testament and we get to the book of John. And in the meantime, I told him, you know, the, the Catholic Church is in the Old Testament. They're still there. The things they do sounds just like what we read in the Old Testament. That hits me every time I read it. And so we got to the New Testament reading the book of John. We get to the third chapter. We get down to the 15, 16, 17, 18. And I'm reading this. And we were doing it together each night a little bit. I said, uh-huh. I said, that's it. That's it. And he says, what? I said, that's the answer. I said, since I was 12 years old, I've been wondering why Jesus was on the cross, crucified, all the blood, all the thorns, and I, I never got the why. And I said, and, and I'm following these different things in my church, and I don't know why. And I've been trying to find out the why. I said, this is the answer. And I said, that's it. That's it for me. And he, I said, that what you believe? He said, mm-hmm. And I, I said, does your church teach this Bible? Mm -hmm. Everything in it straight, no crooked stuff. Uh huh. That's for me, and that settled it. So about two, three Sundays later, and I'd been going to the Catholic Church with a neighbor, and I don't know, he didn't get to go anywhere because there wasn't any Baptist church, and uh, he just let me go. He said it'd be okay. Then I came back. I said, "That's it. We got to find the church." So we visited Episcopalian, Presbyterian not happy. Then I read in the Sunday, Saturday paper a little blurb about a mission, a Baptist mission down in Kahului, Maui. So I said, hey, Joe, there's a Baptist church down. He said, oh, that's a Baptist mission. I said, there's a difference? He said, yeah, they haven't become a church yet. I said, okay, let's go. So the next Sunday we went down. Robert was on my lap as about, he was, gee, I don't know, six, seven, eight months old. My other little boy was about a year and he was over to, uh, he was sitting with the the teenage, the young kids group. I was in a teenage class with you on my lap, and Joe was, Dad was doing another class. So I went there, and then Sunday, then the service came on, and this young Christian was a preacher, had dedicated himself to be a preacher, surrendered to the ministry, and and he's preaching, and they give the invitation, and we're in a a, a plain old wooden floored exercise room for the Buddhist camp. This camp of workers for the plantation used it for their exercises or karate or whatever. And they stopped them gathering when the war hit. They couldn't gather in groups anymore. So the missionary was able to get the building to start a mission. So here we are in this oiled floor, no painted walls, wooden benches, no just one room. And so we, we get off of our little chairs, go to the benches that making the order time and we have church. And I feel like I'm worshiping. And I've been in a, in beautiful buildings with all the statues and all the gold and all the pretty and I never really felt this way about now this is worshiping God. And so when the invitation was given, hey I'm ready <laughs> But Dad says, let's wait until next time and I'll, we'll talk some more. And I said, what's to talk? And he said, we, we need to. I said, okay. So I waited patiently, but I was ready to go up every Sunday. And so he, he next week he had the missionary come to the house to check me out. I call it check me out. 
I thought she came for just a visit, but she was asking me questions to see if I knew whereof I was coming from, and that made them feel better. I said, okay, so I answered their questions, and I still knew what I wanted, and that's what I've been ever since. Then another missionary from Oahu came to Maui, and he came periodically to preach and to baptize, so he baptized about six or seven ladies of us uh, that were new Christians in the uh, Punane swimming pool. All the, what a great witness, you see, all the children and the adults get out of the water and we go in with our white robes and he comes in and he baptizes each of us. And, and that settled it. And then I became their church's first clerk. Knew nothing about it. I was first clerk, holding Robert in my arms, taking notes for the meeting. <laughs> Now, you said that you wanted to marry a man who liked to go to church. Yes. Yes. Oh, he sure did. And he made him to where he not only loved God and liked to go to church, he lives it. He lives in church. <laughs> when we pastored, he was always living at the church. Yeah. I said, God had a sense of humor. He gave me double dose. <laughs>